Hey guys, this morning I thought I'd try my hand at some simple scripting tutorials. Uh, I'm going to make a very simple device that has a switch that allows us to click an object and switch it on and off, and we'll have it do something uh, for those two states. So first of all I'm going to create a cube, I go to the content tab, I click new script, and open it up. So here we see uh, the default script. So what we have here is uh, a default state. Everything in between this and this is considered to be the default state. Now we don't have to worry about this too much at this stage. As long as that's at the top and this is at the bottom, everything will work fine. Uh, inside the state we have a state entry event. Uh, this, anything inside here, will be executed when you first save or reset a script. As the code enters the default state, the state entry is executed, which is why when we save the script, it will do LL say hello avatar on channel 0. So if I hit reset, you see that there. Now here we also have a touch start event. This event is executed when you start touching the box as it sounds. So when I touch this cube it will execute the code in here and it will say touched. We can change this here and save it. say that. So LSL is an event driven code. Uh, you'll use all sorts of different events just like touch start to trigger what you want to happen. So in this case we're going to be making a simple switch. So I'm going to be using this touch start event. First thing I need to create is a variable to hold uh, the, the current state of the switch, which will either be a 0 for off or a 1 for on. So for this I'll use an integer and I'm going to call it switch. You can call it whatever you like, but it's always good to name it uh, so that it makes sense for your script. Now integer variables can hold whole numbers, 1, 2, 3, so on. Under our touch start event, we need to look at our switch variable and find out what it's currently set to. To do that, we're going to use an if statement. So we just type if, and then anything in the brackets will be uh, the statement it's looking at. So in this case, we want if switch equals zero. when we're doing comparisons we use two equal symbols like this. So this is asking the question is switch currently set to zero? If that statement is true anything in between these two parentheses will be executed. So in this case we're going to set switch to 1 we just use a single equal symbol to assign a value to a variable. And let's also do uh, L, 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 I want to say, oops, if I can type it properly, on. LL, I want say, is used to chat, uh, only to chat text that only the owner can see. Now notice I'm putting this semicolon at the end of each line. Any uh, statement, any line of code where you're actually executing something has to be terminated with a semicolon like this. So if I save the script now, when I touch it, it says on. Now at this point, switch has been set to 1. So if I touch it again, nothing's going to happen. 
This is because we haven't handled what to do when switch equals 1. So let's extend our if statement and put an else if. Else if switch equals equals 1. So now if switch equals equals 0 is true, this code is executed. Else if switch equals equals 1 that's true, then this code will be executed. So we'll set switch back to zero and we'll say off. Save that. And now when we click it, on, off, on, So let's make it do something else. Let's make it change the colour of the print. Now, if you don't know all the statements of LSL, this isn't a problem uh, at this point. To show you what I would do if I wanted to look up something I didn't know, I know what I need to do. I want to change the colour of this object. So let's go to Help and Script Library. This will open the LSL wiki. LSL Wiki has everything you could ever possibly need. Uh, let's go to Functions. Or no, let's just go to here, LSL Portal. Here we have all our categories. In this case, I'm going to find... Uh, we want to do something with colour. Where would that be? Colour. That explains a lot about how colours work. LL set colour, that sounds like what we need. So, it explains here LL set colour uses a vector colour and an integer face. For face, we can use all sides, and colours are vectors, which I'll explain in just a second. So, I now have found what I need to know. I'll copy that and I'll paste it in here. So, vectors. Vectors look like this. They have three numbers, and these are used to represent both positions in 3D space, in which case it would be X, Y, and Z. Uh, in this case, we're going to use it to represent a colour. And the first number is red, the second number is green, and the third number is blue. So if we want our box to turn red, we just put 1.0 in the red part, and leave the others both set to 0. Uh, the numbers go from 0 to 1. Anything in between, so 0 0.5 would be half strength of red, and then you can mix the colours uh, with different numbers in each one. So that's a red vector. I'll put here. We actually, hang on, this is where we switch it on. So let's have it turn green for on. So we have one under green. And for face, we're going to use all sides so that the whole object changes to green. I'll just copy that again, and under off, we want it to set red, so I'll put a 1 in there, and a 0 in there. Save it. On, off, on, off. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do for now, because this is already getting a little bit too long. Uh, next time I'll show you a few more events and a few more variable types.